Hey Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. It is so good to be back with you guys. Well, I got to tell you, Psychic Bob's okay. Um, I didn't get out of video yesterday. I was not feeling well. As you know, this week I've been battling a cold. I think I'm over the worst of it. Yesterday I got really ill and then I got like much better this morning. So I think it kind of broke last night. Anyways, I've been taking it easy in between readings, so I haven't been able to get out of video. But it's Saturday, and I want to come here and spend a few minutes with you. You know, I've been sitting here meditating on this new pendant that I got. As many of you know, I love jewelry. And I got a beautiful pendant from India. Take a look at this. I hope you guys can see it. It's got some glare on it. This is a pendant of Radha and Krishna. This is a Hindu form of the Lord and the Lady. Krishna is famous all over India as a divine uh, avatar of God. And he's always shown in a blue color. And there's Radha. I just love them. I just got this. I've been meditating on the concept of Radha and Krishna and the divine love. And Lord Krishna, well, actually, as you can see here, he plays a flute. And it's believed that his flute music is so intoxicating that it draws all the souls of the cosmos to him. I think that's true. I just love Krishna. You know, isn't it beautiful? So beautiful. I used to live near a Hindu temple, and they had this beautiful statue of Lord Krishna and the goddess Radha. And, uh, you know, I just, I love it. I, I, I'm a believer in Krishna. So as I've been healing, I've been meditating on Lord Krishna and his gentle music that imbibes the soul. And I think it's healed my body, actually. <laughs> I do. I really do. Anyways, I'm glad you're here. I had to show that to you and share it with you. Well, it's Saturday. Now, normally we do a seance and a spiritualist class. This week, I am still a little weak. I'm not going to channel. Uh, I just feel like I don't have quite yet the energy to do that. And so we're not going to do channeling. But I thought we'd talk a little bit more about uh, this book, Mystical Traveler. As you know, we've been going through this for the last few weeks. Sylvia Brown's book. And uh, we're going to continue today. We're going to start on page 40. And um, this is a section called Using Magic. And I think this is interesting because Sylvia Brown is really in terms of spirituality. She's a spiritualist, not a Wiccan. But um, she believes in magic. And I just think that's cool because I'm a Wiccan and I believe in magic. I'm also a spiritualist. But it's kind of neat when the traditions crisscross. So we're going to continue on reading about this. So if you have this book, turn with me to... Um, it's in chapter three, a covenant with God, and it's page 40 using magic. <clears throat> okay. So let's jump into it. Sylvia writes, <clears throat> speaking of programming, let's now discuss what might seem to be a very esoteric subject at first. It seems that mystical travelers become the masters of what has been called imitative magic. This is a form of programming that ancient people were particularly fond of. They'd imitate what they wanted or needed from the gods by pouring pitchers of water on the ground and hoping for rain and so forth. Now I'm just going to pause there for a second. This is this is true. This is a uh, imitative magic is when you create an image of something that you want to bring into manifestation. And this is actually done in Wicca as well. Um, so anyway, she's talking about something that I'm actually very familiar with. Although mystical travelers are wonderful programmers, you can do the very same thing. In his book, The Power of Intention, Dr. Wayne Dyer expertly writes that what you think and how you act will come to pass. It's truly the law of attraction. Try it yourself. Act as if you're happy and happiness will come. Act as if you're well and your body will follow suit. Act as if you have enough money without going into debt and you'll enjoy prosperity. On the other hand, if you act sick, depressed, run down and poor, you will have dug a hole where no light can come through. Now see, I think that's really true because that's why I said last night I turned a kind of a leaf in my healing. Usually when I get a cold, it takes me like two or three weeks to get over it. 
and this one's been about two days. And last night as I was meditating, in fact, I was meditating on Lord Krishna, I felt a true connection with his power. And I said, I'm claiming this as my healing power. And I woke up this morning and I'm feeling a lot better. Now I'm 100% no. Even Psycho Bob has to work at this magic, but it's there. And so I said, you know what? I may not be able to get everything out perfectly, but I can get a little bit of a video out. So I'm on my path to healing. And I really believe that my consciousness and my choice to connect with that energy is bringing my healing much quicker than three weeks or two weeks. I'm getting in two days. You know, like she says here, if you act sick, depressed, run down, or poor, you have dug a hole where no light can come through. Now, don't we all know people, I mean, we all know somebody in our lives who's that never do well person. No matter what you say, oh, how are you doing today? Oh, well, things are just so bad. Or, you know, oh, you know, how's your job going? Oh, you just don't want to know. I just, I can't wait to get out of there. They never say anything positive. See, when you go around with that mindset, you limit not only your chance to bring success in your life, but you limit your joy. And in a sense, you rob joy from others. So, you know, I think Silver Reserve, we've got to work, all of us, myself included, on changing our consciousness to create a new reality. I think there's really something to this. Let's go on and read some more. <clears throat> you may ask, but what if you've written suffering into your chart? How do you change that? You don't, but you can modify or shorten what's been written. Let's take the 24-hour flu as an example. I've been just as guilty as this, of this, but did you ever notice that as sure as the sun will rise, when you count off the time and reach the 24th hour, you feel fine? So why can't we have a 15-minute flu or just one week of cancer? Now, I'm going to pause there because, you know, I can tell you our consciousness does create this reality. That's like why I said last night I was doing mantras and prayers and meditation on Krishna to connect with his power. And this morning I felt much more empowered. So I think, you know, this is something that we can all work on. We can change our timelines. So as I said, normally it takes me two weeks to get over a cold. Now I've got down to two days. I think I'm making progress. You know, and so I want to encourage you to think about that. You know, as a psychic, I see people in all sorts of circumstances. And I had one time a lady come for a reading, a private reading. And I sat there and I said, oh, I see you're moving. Oh, you're going to have a great move. I said, it looks like you're going to be visiting with a, a relative, a sister. You're going to be starting a business. And she said, yes, Bob, all of that's right. But she said, I'm not really going there for the business. I'll be part of it. But she said, I'm going there because I've got terminal cancer. I'm going to die. And she said, I came to you to help plan my death. And I thought, oh, say goodbye. I missed this one. Oh, I'm off. So I said to Fletcher, I said, uh, how did I miss this? I'm seeing everything except I get to this point. I'm totally wrong. And Fletcher said, well, you're not wrong. It's because she's it's not her time to go. And I told her, I said, um, who told you you're going to die? She said, doctors. They gave me the diagnosis. She brought me the you know, CAT scans and all the x-rays, you know, tumors in her body. I just saw the tumors. And I said to her, I said, how do you feel about this? And she said, I just don't think it's my time. I can't believe their diagnosis. She said, the doctor said I'm stage four and I've got about you know maybe two or three months left. She said, so that's why I'm going out to stay with my sister. She said, she does run a, a thrift business. I am going to help her unless I get really weak. And she said, but I'm really planning to be there at the end, for the end. And I said, I don't see an end for you. She said, really? I said, you, do you feel like you're going to die? She said, no. I said, you're not going to die. Everybody that knows they're going to die, they already know it. Like I've had people come to me and I've told them, oh, Yo, you've got six months to live. And they usually say to me, you know, Bob, I know you're right. I already know it. I'm preparing. But this lady, she had like three or four months left. And I said, I don't see death. I just, I don't see it. Well, she said, Bob, can you look again? Maybe you're missing it. I looked. I said, no, all those tumors are going to be gone. Well, anyways, guess what? Two weeks later, she called me. She said, oh, my God, how did you do it? I said, well, what are you talking about? She said, I went back. All the tumors are gone. They've x-rayed me. There's nothing in my body. And I saw the original 
x-rays. They were clearly tumors in her body. And she'd been to multiple doctors, oncologists, all of them could concurred the same thing. But you see, that's the power of spirit. And our consciousness, I gave her permission to challenge the doctor. I said, I want you to go get a second opinion. I want you to choose that's not your time to go because I don't see it. My spirit guide's not seeing it. I don't think you're going. And guess what? Cancer disappeared. She did not die. And she's so alive. So that's the power of spirit. God loves, God loved doctors, but they program us too. For instance, I saw a woman on TV this morning who had brain cancer. The medical world had given her three months to live. Wow, this sounds like my case. Um, yet she is now in her ninth year of being cancer free. She wouldn't listen to the statistics she'd been given and stated and started to live instead of merely waiting around for death. She wasn't necessarily a mystical traveler as each and every one of us can heal and program ourselves. Now, see, Sylvia had a case like that, too. That's really cool. Well, the lady I had, I think she had breast cancer. This lady had, had brain cancer. But you see, that's the spirit. That's the human spirit. Human spirit and the divine spirit work together. So when we say God does miracles, yes, but we also do miracles. And it's a union. So when you, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're thinking, oh, doctor said I got three months to live, I'm going to tell you, don't believe that. How do you know? If you feel like you're dying, maybe you will. But maybe you can also say, I don't feel like it's not time to go. Because I tell you, that lady that I did the reading for, I said, do you think it's, do you feel like you're ready? She said, no, I have no inclination of leaving this earth. It just doesn't even seem possible. And I'm not ready for it. And I'm not accepting it. I said, there's your key. You're not accepting it. You know, people say mind over matter. I think there's real truth, truth to that. We create our reality by our consciousness. This is how magic works. So we can create, we can dissolve. So I you know, told her, visualize the light going through you and it's cleaning out all the tumors. It's not there. You just dissolve them like they're soap suds and all the tumors disappear. Now she tried to say, I did some magic. I didn't do anything. She did it herself. And you can do it too. Need a job? Conjure a job. Need a new home? Conjure a new home. Our consciousness draws to us that which we want. So use your mind carefully. <clears throat> it's very important to write down what you're programming for, whether it's health, well-being, love, wealth, or whatever or whatever you like, because the pen is mightier than the sword. The practice of writing also helps to implant what you want more strongly in your mind. The entire act uses your senses, to, senses of touch and sight, and the more senses and faculties that you bring into play, the greater the impact the programming will have. Advertising, advertisers and masters of propaganda know that, the, that these are technologies that make a greater impact on the human mind. So, have the greatest impact on your own mind. Try to read your programming out loud every day, and it will sink into your very being. Now, see, this is another principle of magic what Sylvie is talking about. If we get a pen and a notepad and we write down you know I need a new home by 30 days I need a new car now you can't probably get everything you want in one go but start with one thing that you really need and write it down put it up take you know I like to post stuff on my mirror so just take and put it on your mirror in your bedroom or bathroom and when you get up to your shaving comb your hair that what your desire is is right in front of you. you get another chance to reflect on it and I believe that if you're also doing deep meditation and working with light, you're in raising power. All of these are techniques to raise power. And so remember this, you have the power. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop there today. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think is very important on your journey is also remembering balance. Um, it's true we have the power to heal. Like I think I've very much contributed to my healing along with the spirit world. 
but we also have to keep balance. So I'm going to rest my voice because it's coming back. I don't want to overdo it till it gets stronger. So I'm not going to channel today. I'm not going to strain myself, but I'm on the mend. I'm doing really well. And I think Sylvia's right on with this. Anyways, tell me in the box below, have you ever manifested something through your consciousness? Maybe you had a wish or desire and you really focused on maybe you made it happen. Maybe it's you did a spell. Maybe you created something and then you brought it into manifestation. Tell me about that. Tell me below any of your experiences with the law of attraction or drawing stuff to you. I'd love to hear it. Listen, guys, thank you for being here. You guys rock. And just want to remind you, um, pop over to my website also. I have books over there that will also help you in your journey. Messages from Rose about my work as a medium. Psyche Bob's book of Wiccan wisdom about my 20 years as a Wiccan practitioner. And my first original book, Ouija Mysteries, very first book I put out. Um, Ouija Mysteries, the Spirit Board Seances. Check all of these out. And I'm still taking calls for readings if you want to get on my schedule. Give me a call at my office, 703-825-3929, and we'll get you on the schedule. Or if you want to, you need to write me, you can't call me, write to me, readings at robert-hickman.com. That link will be below as well. You guys are best. I love you. I send blessings to you. Keep it here at Spiritual. Tomorrow is Sunday. We're going to have the Witching Hour 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific, live broadcast. We're going to talk about wicked and magical things. Make sure to be here. You don't want to miss it. Anyways, guys, thank you for being here. I love you. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the witching hour. And until then, may you all always blessed be.